How's it going gamers? RebelX here in the War Room and today we're looking at State of Decay Year 1 Survival Edition. Tips and Tricks Part 2. This is where we look further into State of Decay in terms of what you should be equipping your survivors, putting on outposts, and moving into a bigger base. So let's get into that right here, right now. Alright gamers, now let's talk about uh, outposts first. Now when you've gained enough friendly influence from your survivors, you've picked up enough supplies, the next thing you want to do is set up outposts. Now outposts, you want to set them up along the main road leading up to your main base. You could do this when you go to a, any type of homes or warehouses where there's a lot of supplies, you can call in scavengers, but the game will also give you the option to set up an outpost. Now an outpost does two different things. The first one is you can drop off materials at these outposts. You can drop off packages, but you can drop off individual items instead of running back to your main base. The next thing though, is that if you see these little circles here, any zombie horde that walks in that circle will be destroyed automatically by landmines. Outposts actually set up little landmines on the outskirts that helps you to take out zombie horde. This makes it a lot safer for your scavengers to go to and from your base to pick up material and also yourself in traveling and luring zombie hordes. So make sure you're setting up outposts on the main roads where zombie hordes go and also lure them into this area allowing it to be a lot secure for you and your survivors to travel. Alright gamers, now speaking of survivors, do not allow any survivor in your group to be carrying on a lot of weaponry. Do not run the risk of them being killed or worst off, abandoning your group. Remember, if a survivor leaves your group, they are permanently gone and they take all items they have equipped. So as I said before in my last video, the thing you should always equip to every survivor is one melee weapon, one uh, main firearm with at least 30 rounds of ammunition, three snacks that keeps their stamina going, and three uh, medic uh, pills, if you will, in case they get injured. This way it keeps them uh, well balanced, it keeps them secured, it also allows there to be more room in their backpack to carry more items when you select them, and you don't run the risk of losing a lot if they leave your group. But hopefully if you're keeping up enough supplies and morale is up, you won't have to worry about them leaving at all. And if they get killed by a horde of zombies, that's okay. Their pack will drop where they were killed so you can get another survivor to retrieve their stuff. But as I said, keep it a, a minimum of what you're giving each and every survivor to keep equipped. Now the next thing in terms of morale you want to do in this game is that make sure you deal with all problems. If a survivor is having morale problems, like they're scared or they're causing problems, all you have to do is talk to them, bring them along in a raid, or anything else that the game requires you to do, it'll take about two or three minutes for you to do this and they'll just be, oh, I'm just fine now. So you don't have to worry about babysitting them or worried about the morale affecting the rest of your group. But make sure you take care of morale very, very quickly. Now, the next thing you wanna do is that you wanna help out other survivors that haven't joined your crew yet. This is actually a good way for them to establish neighbors in the nearby area that can help you out in terms of supplies. Also, the more you help them out and the more you gain their trust, eventually they're gonna to wanna to join your side. So yes, go out of your way to help the besieged survivors as many times as you can. That way you can run a bigger chance of more survivors joining your group. All right, gamers, now once you've gathered enough supplies and also survivors, extra survivors, you're going to eventually have to have to move out of the church. Now, when you do this, you're actually going to talk to a character named Jacob who's going to offer two places to you. The first one is a house, as you see right here. Do not pick that house. It's right next to a main road in the map of that area that a lot of zombies uh, walk around, so do not pick that place. There's also a high infection area as well, so do not pick that house at all. What you will want to pick, though, is this warehouse he'll take you to. This warehouse is ideal. It's a very big uh, home base for your crew to live in. It's a perfect place to go. And as I said before, it's actually in the fall outskirts of the map. So you don't have to worry about a lot of zombies traveling around. There's a lot of buildings you can create outposts that can really fortify your base to the point where you don't have to even see a zombie walking down the main road. This is an ideal place. But most importantly too, is that this actually has around four or five places not already built. So you can actually add a lot of things. You can add a garden, you can add a medical area, you can add a training facility, you can add a library. There's a lot of things you can do. Now, the things I recommend you do when you finally get this place is that you want to first build a living quarters and a workshop. A workshop allows your team to build items like silencers for your guns, uh, bombs, firecrackers for distractions, that kind of stuff. The next thing you're going to want to build too is another living quarters. Because you have such a large group of people with you, you're going to want to build an extra living quarters. The next thing too is that you want to build a library. A library is where you can learn about how to survive. It allows you to preserve food better, allows you to build better weapons. This is an ideal thing you want to build. The next thing is build a medical tent. As you get further along in the game, more and more of your survivors are going to wind up getting hurt by tougher zombies, but, but worse, they're going to probably going to get sick. 
you want to make sure you're building a medical facility and upgrading it above everything else. So make sure to upgrade your medical tent. That way you can help survivors who are sick, prevent infection, and keep those survivors going. The other thing too is that you're going to probably want to build as well, um, as I stated, is a garden, but also upgrade your post. There's an actual tower you're going to have to build. Upgrade that tower. It allows for better accuracy and makes it a lot safer for your survivors to be traveling around, getting closer to your home base, and taking out other zombies that are nearby. The other thing too you want to finally build is a kitchen. Building a kitchen allows you to cook food that's already been prepped, that you've gathered. This allows your guys to eat food more preply prepared. It won't be, there won't be any bacteria or anything. Nobody's going to get sick, so build a kitchen. If you follow these terms and build the base the way, as I just explained to you, you're going to have a very happy group of people. Morale's going to be up and you're going to be ready for the next portion of this game once you start traveling further into Marshall. Alright gamers, that's all the time we have here today in the War Room. Feel free to subscribe to the War Room for more gameplay tips and tricks on not only Save Decay, but all your favorite games, both current and coming up very soon. Until then, I'm Rebel X, and we'll see you guys next time here in the War Room.